Hi, welcome to Budget MTG Decks. All magic fun, all cards in a dollar. I'm David. I'm Stefan. And today we're going to be looking at all the red cards in Ixalan. We'd also like to remind you that we have a Patreon page. So if you want to support the channel, you want to help us out, head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdecks. We're going to evaluate these cards for limited, like draft or sealed, or like your upcoming pre-release. And we're gonna, for your upcoming pre-release, you'll get six booster packs of Ixalan. Exactly, we're going to be evaluating these cards according to our three-tiered system. Tier 1, these are our excellent cards, these are the cards that are going to be winning you the game. Our t your two cards are really good, they push you into color or are auto-includes if you're already in that color. The Tier 3 cards are your fillers, these are the cards you're going to be using to smooth out your mana curve. And then finally, the cards that are either too situational or just plain bad, we're going to put those cards aside. Now, without further ado, let's have a look at the common cards. The first of our common cards is Ryle. For a single red, it's a sorcery, and it deals one damage to target creature you control. Then that creature gains trample till the end of turn, and we also get to draw a card. Now this is the kind of card that is supposed to go very well with the enrage mechanics that the dinosaurs have, that when they get uh, dealt a point of damage, they get a benefit. Uh, however, this is a very situational card because you need this, you need a dinosaur that can benefit from it, and also since it dealt a point of damage to that creature, it's also going to be less effective in combat. Uh, and the fact that it replaces itself does not warrant inclusion in your deck, so we're going to put it aside. Yeah, because you're going to damage your own creature, and still the card wall is nice for one mana, but I think it's not worth it to most of the time kill your creature. Yeah. Fire Shrine Shaker, Fire Shrine Keeper. A red 1-1 one, one elemental menace, 7 and a red, tap, sacrifice fire, sh uh, fire shrine keeper, it deals 3 damage to each of up to 2 target creatures. We've seen these cards before, it's just too expensive, it doesn't do something when it comes in um, immediately, so put it aside. Yeah, and just the fact that it's a 1-1 one, one menace, I mean the evasion is nice, but once again the 1-1, one, one, if we don't want a 1-1 one, one flyer, then why would we want a 1-1 one, one with menace, and the, the flyer would be better. Exactly. Next card is Dual Shot for a single red. It's an instant. Dual Shot deals one damage to each of, a, of up to two target creatures. Now we've seen this effect many times before. In principle, you think to yourself, ah, oh, they're going to be making lots of tokens and then we can kill both of those, or they've got those two ones. But in principle, people shouldn't be playing those and they shouldn't be playing those one one life linking things. So in essence, you this it's good in a situation where player your opponent is building a bad deck, but then you might as well use better cards which are good against a bad deck anyway. So put it aside. Exactly, it's um, like we said before, these kind of cards are like kind of situational. If you play against someone who has a lot of one ones or X ones, then you can put it in sideboard, but not put it in your main deck. Correct, yeah. Swashbuckling, one on the red, enchantment aura, enchant creature, enchant creature gets plus two, plus two, and has haste. You've seen this card before. Um, haste is um, nice, but not always relevant and for two mana you just don't want to play it so you just put it aside yeah hey especially just an effect like this you don't really need it on an enchantment let's say the haste because you could just as well get it on an instant or sorcery spell and the plus two plus two we already saw that the blue version of this gives flying and also plus two plus two for the same price and of course the flying that stays on throughout the game and the haste is just useful only when it comes in plus the haste is only relevant when we're putting it on the creature when it came in that turn so in essence you also need to have enough mana to play the creature and play this one at the same time, so that makes it substantially worse. Exactly, because if you draw it late game, then it doesn't actually do anything, so that's why. Yeah, but early game also not, because you can't pay for both things as well. Exactly. So, bad early, bad late. Fathom Fleet Firebrand for one and a red. We've got a 2-2 two -two Human Pirate, so right off the bat, that's a fine filler right there, a 2-2 two -two for two. Additionally, we can pay a mana and a red, and then he gets plus one, plus zero until the end of turn. So he's got kind of expensive fire breathing on it. Uh, you can play it, the fire breathing is not so much that I'll, I'll put it into tier two, but it is a fine filler just because it does what it's supposed to do, which is a two, two for two, and it has a nice little upside, potentially late game. Exactly, like we said before, we do like our mana sinks. So it's something like, oh, I have mana left over, I'll just use it, and you don't really have to um, use it when you attack. Someone, um, if someone blocks, then you can kill, pop it up to kill a creature, trade with it. Or if you attack, it comes through, you can pump it or not. It all depends on you. Exactly, it's instant speed. That's what yeah. makes it so nice. Sure strike, one on red, instant, target creature, plus three, plus zero, and gains first strike until end of turn. Um, a good combat trick, first strike um, ensures that your creature will survive, 
plus three is also a lot of damage. Tier three, good combat trick. Yeah, very good combat trick. Yeah, this is just imagine just putting this on a, on a two two, then you're able to trade with anything with five toughness. And that's pretty much as big as it comes. So that's uh, yeah, that's huge. Then we have uh, Tilanali's Knight for one and a red. It's a 2-2 two, two human knight. Once again, the body's fine, 2-2 two, two for two. Additionally, whenever this guy attacks, if you control a dinosaur, then he gets plus one, plus one until end of turn. So sure, it could potentially be a 3-3 three, three sometimes, only when it attacks. Very situational. Once again, you have to have a dinosaur, so you can't always count on that because you might have this one, you might not have the other one, other, and vice versa. So uh, we have to take it, look at it just, for its basic ability, which is being a 2-2 two, two for 2, which is fine. So it's just yeah. an okay filler. It's a filler with upside. Yeah, don't feel bad about including it. Nest Wobble, 1 and a red. It's a 2-1 dinosaur with haste. Like, we don't really like our 2 ones for 2. It has haste. It's relevant for maybe one turn, and then it just trades. So like, I don't really like it. No. Just put it aside. It's, it's a cool dinosaur. That's what's so annoying about it. But <laughs> want to include it, but all right. There's plenty of other good dinosaurs, so let's have a look at Headstrong Brute for two and a red. It's a 3-3 three, three Orc Pirate, so that's actually already really good uh, body for that price. Has some abilities as well. This guy can't block. Okay, well, we're in red. We're going to be a little bit more aggressive than in the other color, so that's not so red. And it also has Menace as long as you control another pirate. Once again, nice little potential upside. Can't count on it. However, as it's a 3-3 three, three for 3 that we can use to attack, it doesn't it, it, it can attack alone, it doesn't have any problems, downsides like that. So that's a fine filler. Can not say more about it? It's just pretty good. Yeah, pretty good. Frenzy the Raptor. 2 on a red, 4-2 dinosaur. It has 4 power, so that's nice, but it will be blocked by a bear, so that's less. So you have to watch out with that, but still the power will make it a good filler. Yeah. Normally you see these four twos at, at four mana, and in that case, then you should never include them because at that point in time, you want something that has more toughness and won't be trading with bears. But as this one only has is only one more expensive, one more mana, like more expensive than a regular bear, which would be a first two two for two, having that premium extra two power is actually really decent. So then you can uh, it's a fine filler at that point in time. Rummaging Goblin is next for two and a red. We get a one one Goblin Rogue. Uh, and it has the ability of tapping and discarding a card and drawing a card. So this is of course the quintessential rummaging card. Uh, this is the opposite of loot, where you first draw and then you discard, and rummaging is where you first discard and then you draw. So it's slightly worse than looting, but red has access to this, and actually it's always good because after all, in limited, what do we want to do? We want to dig for our awesome game-winning cards, and rummaging goblin can do it every single turn. Yeah. I think it's always really undervalued. You get so many cards from it every single turn and you can block with it if you need to and then still rummage. So I th I always love this card. Yeah, always included if you're in red as tier 2. Yeah. Fire Cannon Blast, 1 and 2 red, it's a sorcery. Fire Cannon Blast deals 3 damage to target creature and with weight, Fire Cannon Blast deals 6 damage to the creature instead if you attack with the creature this turn. 3 mana, 3 damage, sure, 3 mana, 6 damage if you attacked, great, tier 2, 3 damage or 6 damage, always in the good. Yeah, it's, you're always going to get what you want out of it because you can uh, you can choose to have it activate by sending something towards your opponent. Very nice. Then we have Hijack for 1 and 2 red, so for 3 mana as a sorcery, we're going to be gaining control of target artifact or creature until the end of turn. We're going to untap it and it's going to gain haste until the end of turn. So in essence, we're going to take our opponent's best thing and we're going to untap it and we get to attack them with it. So uh, normally you'd say, okay, this is, a, this is a pretty cool effect, this is, this is going to be awesome. However, the problem is that as good as a mind control effect is where you take take the worst thing away from them and add the best thing for you. This is only temporary. You only use it one time and then you lost this card and your opponent got their good thing back. Uh, there's not enough uh, sacrifice outlets and stuff like that to be able to build a strategy around this so you can also sack it at the end of that turn. So in that case, I would just say put it aside. Yeah. Demolish, three and a red. It's a sorcery, destroy target artifact or land. You've seen this before, just put it aside. Yeah, uh, the destroying the land is just not, not going to be making a difference no. at that point in time in the game. And yeah, the artifact. Too situational. 
Thrash of Raptors for three and a red. We've got a three, three dinosaur, so that's okay, body. Three, three, four, four. Additionally, when you, if you control another dinosaur, this guy gets plus two, plus zero, and has trample. So if you have another dinosaur, it is a five, three with trample. That's, of course, super powerful for four. But let's just assume that we don't have that, and in that case, three, three, four, four with upside, potential upside is good. Yes, Whatever. it's good. I mean, even if, if you just have a dinosaur, it's just great. Yeah. Brazen Buccaneers, 2 and a red, human pirate, a 2-2 two -two with haste, when Brazen Buccaneers enters the battlefield, it explores. So for 4 mana, like we said before, it's like on the edge, if the explore, the land is really um, great, it's really good, but still, you get a 2-2 two -two if, um, if it doesn't get a counter, and I don't think that's good enough, and just put aside, because the haste doesn't really add that much. Yeah, it's, it's really, uh, it's, it's kind of bad when you've got a 2-2 two, two with haste that can attack that turn, but you're already doing this on turn 4, in which case there's almost no way that it's going to be able to attack effectively and survive combat. Exactly, and we have um, two mana creatures that have haste, um, that will have um, two power always. Yeah. So, and you're paying four mana for it with maybe an extra power, don't play it. No, no. better play the dinosaur, that's a guaranteed 3-3. <laughs> Then we have Unfriendly Fire for four and a red. It's an instant. It's going to be dealing four damage to every creature or player. I mean, red likes to deal damage directly. This is the kind of uh, the exact exactly the kind of removal that we uh, that we want, especially if we're in red. It push or if we see these kind of cards, it pushes into red. This is tier two because it gets rid of pretty much any creature. Yeah, four damage is a lot. Yeah, Storm Fleet Pyromancer four on the red. It's a three three uh, three two. Human Pirate Wizard, and it has Raid. When Stormfleet Pyramids enters the battlefield, if you attack a creature this turn, Stormfleet Pyramids deals 2 damage to target creature or player. So it's a good filler. It's really expensive for the um, body, but you can do 2 damage to creature or player. So it gives a bit of reach. It may kill something when it comes in, so that's nice. Yeah. So good filler. Yeah, so what we mean with uh, reach, we don't mean the ability reach, we mean that uh, we can deal damage directly to our opponent's face if later on the game uh, gets stalled and we can't attack effectively, then it gives us the reach to be able to do those extra last few points of damage and kill our opponent because we do it straight to their, uh, to their dice, so that's awesome. Uh, then the last of the commons, and that is Sun Crown Hunters for four and two red, so for six mana we get a five, four dinosaur with enrage. And here we go, we get to see the ability that the dinosaurs have, some of the dinosaurs have in Rage, is whenever this creature is dealt damage, it deals three damage to target opponent. So once again, this is a cool creature that when it late game, first of all, the body's fine, because of course it has more than uh, than two toughness, so that that's already means it's gonna be, uh, you're gonna attack, be able to attack with it efficiently. And additionally, it gives us that reach that should be blocked in combat, for example, or if we have something that deals damage to it directly, then it will give us that reach to uh, damage our opponent's face. So um, yeah, it's, it's expensive, but I would always play it because it is, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a powerful card. Yeah, I mean, it's expensive, it's six mana, but you get a five, four, and um, it will do uh, something when it gets damaged. So I don't think it's that expensive. No, no, I guess you're right, yeah. Yeah, so to nice. play it, yeah, always play it. All right, nice. Those are the commons. Let's have a look at the uncommons. The first one common is Wigging Runner. A red, a goblin pirate, is a 1-1 one -one with first strike. It has raid. Wigging Runner enters battlefield with plus one plus one counter on it if you attack with a creature this turn. Which means it's a 1-1 one -one with first strike on the first turn, which is bad. And you do not normally don't play any um, one no drops anyway, so turn three, at the earliest, you have a 2-2 two -two with first strike for one mana. And I don't think that's that great. I think you can play a 3-drop, which is better. Yeah. So just put it aside. Exactly. Altepec Huntmaster is next for one and a red. So for two mana, we get a 1-2 Human Shaman. It has a cool little discount for dinosaurs. It says dinosaur spells you cast cost one less. And additionally, we can tap it to give target dinosaur haste until the end of turn. Once again, if you're in Constructed, you're building a dinosaur deck, you're, you're in Commander, you got that dinosaur tribal deck you're building, then it's super awesome, lots of fun, but limited, you're just not going to be able to get enough value out of it, so just put it aside. Yeah. Lightning Strike, one on red, instant. Lightning Strike deals 3 damage to target creature or player, and that is always good. 
2 mana, instant speed, 3 damage, tier 2 play. This is the quintessential burn spell that yeah. you want to be playing in limited. Super nice. Then we have makeshift munitions for 1 and a red. It's an enchantment. And for 1 mana and sacrificing an artifact or creature, we're going to be able to deal 1 point of damage to our creature or player now. As we know, in limited... Uh, first of all, we want our cards and enchantments when they come in, and creatures as well, when they come in to actually do something, to be able to do something. This doesn't do anything when it comes in. Additionally, if we want to be using this ability, we got to be sacrificing our permanence. And of course, very important that we keep our permanence on the table. That's our board state. And if we're going to be sacrificing our permanence to be doing a measly one point of damage to our creature or player, uh, we're going to be feeling very bad. And we're going to be putting, uh, setting ourselves back quite a bit because a trading a permanent for just one point of damage, I don't think that's going to be enough. And next one, Raptor Hatchling, one on the red, it's a 1-1 one -one dinosaur, and we don't really like our 1-1s, one -one, but this one has Enrage. Whenever Raptor Hatchling is dealt damage, create a 3-3 green dinosaur creature token with Trample. So, first is a 1-1 one -one which can um, jump, and then you get a 3-3 with Trample for only 2 mana. So, I think you always want to play this. Exactly. And especially with um, dinosaurs also in green, or whenever you pump its toughness, then you do combat with it, it survives, and then you can do it another time because you get a 3-3 and you can do it another time. Pretty sweet. That would be really nice. That's actually really nasty. Then, then both the mama and the papa dinosaur come over <laughs> to help out this little hatchling. Uh, also clarification, the term uh, chump means when we throw a small creature in front of a bigger creature and it will die, but it saves us from taking some damage because this, of course, is a chump. So that's why... <laughs> So that's why it's called Chump Blocking. All right, Wily Goblin is next for two red. It's a 1-1 one, one Goblin Pirate. Now when this guy enters the battlefield, we're gonna create a treasure. Okay, so we've got a 1-1 one, one for two mana, so we're not happy with that. It boosts us one time with uh, a treasure. We do like that, but I don't think that the cost for what we're getting is, uh, is reasonable. So as awesome as this Goblin looks, uh, we're gonna tell you to put this card aside. Yeah. We like our cards with treasures that actually do something without the treasure. Yeah. And the treasure is most of the time not enough uh, payoff. Bonus, yeah. yeah, it's not enough payoff to include bad cards. Exactly, yeah. Dinosaur, dinosaur Stampede. Two and a red, instant. Attacking creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. And dinosaurs you control gain trample until end of turn. So you probably won't have much dinosaurs, so attacking um, creatures get plus two plus zero. And I like that instant speech, you can always decide when you're doing it. Um, if you don't play anything on your main phase, you still um, you don't have to play it, and you can play something on your second main. So I really like this one, and it's a good combat trick. Yeah, normally these kind of effects which pump your entire team are sorcery speed, and then we usually don't like to include it because people can see it coming a mile away. They don't block or they do block in a way that's un un unattractive for you. But this one says it's instant speed, it allows you to attack and they may think, oh, it's not enough to kill me. And then bam, you play this and all of a sudden they are dead. Exactly. And um, dinosaurs are pretty big and with the trample, it's just insane. Yeah, yeah. So it's, the upside is also very nice. So it's tier three. Then we go on to Fury Cannonade for two and a red. It's an instant and it deals two damage to each non-pirate creature. So it, uh, it's, it's kind of like a light uh, board wipe in red. Um, once again, sure, people will have pirates, people will have dinosaurs, vampires, merfolk, but they won't have them in such quantities that it'll really matter. And essentially with this is going to be kill wiping the board of all small creatures. Uh, so that's really good. And that's because uh, you can play around it. Yeah. It's tier two. And it's instant speed. Yeah. So you can um, block with some creatures, they die, you still have some damage left. Then you can play this. So kill the rest. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Like. Um, we don't like these kind of things on sorcery shoot at least a lot less, but these kind of instant speed kind of spells, you have the reins in hand, and that's really nice about these things. Yeah, very strong. Yeah. Lightning Ray Crew, two in a red, it's a 0-5 Goblin Pirate, and you can tap it to do one damage to each opponent, and whenever you cast a Pirate spell, untap Lightning Ray Crew. We don't really like our walls, no power, doesn't really do anything, but 5 toughness does block a lot of things and you can tap it every single turn to do 1 damage and that's actually um, not bad at all. And when you play a, a pirate spell you can untap it too so that's really great. 
Yeah. So I think it's a good filler. Yeah, how you could see it is in essence is you're guaranteed doing that one point of damage, but you're also guaranteed to be able to block with this thing. You can kind of see it as a 1-5 flyer with vigilance, except when it blocks, it doesn't deal any damage. Kind of, kind of like that. And that would be pretty good. Yeah, but um, it's not even flying because it's unblockable. Unblockable, unblockable. yeah. So it's even vigilance, better, yeah. unblockables, 1-5. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, nice. Then we have Bonded Horncrest for three and a red. It's a 5-5 five, five dinosaur. It's, uh, this guy can't attack or block alone. So it's one of those guys that needs a handler. We've seen this effect before in red. We've got an extra powerful body with, of course, the downside that uh, needs to go together with, with another creature. Uh, in this case, it's a fine filler. You will have another creature that you could send. And if you can't send it along, you can always use it to double block. Uh, five power and five toughness is really big. So normally this downside is pretty high, but because of that power and toughness, it's so massive. If you do have another creature that might be able to attack uh, more freely, like for example, flying or menace or uh, unblockable, then this thing becomes really powerful. 12 of temptation, three and a red it's enchantment. Each opponent must attack you or planeswalker you control with at least one creature each combat if able. At the beginning of your end step, you collect the treasure. So every turn you get a treasure, but they have to attack you, even though they always want to attack you. But for four mana, four mana is so crucial um, point in your game, and you're playing something that will give you one mana every single turn at the end step. I don't think that's enough. No. So just put it aside. Yeah, yeah true. Uh, Stormfleet Arsonist is next for four and a red. We get a four four orc pirate, so that body is already fine. Five mana, so that would that would already make it a tier three. Additionally, it has ray, so if we attack this turn when it enters the battlefield, target opponent sacrifices a permanent. Okay, great. So that also makes them lose a permanent. We don't get to choose what that is, but still, every permanent counts in this game of limited. If we, and if it we have such a massive body and as well removing one card from their battlefield is gonna be, or one thing from their battlefield is gonna be huge. And that's why I think tier two, if you're in red, you always wanna play this. Yeah, I think it's already good enough without the ability. Yeah. And the ability is great. Yeah. So, yeah, just play it. Play tier it two. and get that raid to trigger. The last uncommon is Charging Monster Saw. It's four on the red, it's a five five dinosaur with trample and haste. That's insane. Like on these cards, like big creatures with haste, it's nice. But with the trample with it, um, additionally, that is just awesome because um, they won't expect the haste, but they won't expect the trample at all. So they played us something. Oh, if you have something with haste, you can block it, but the trample just tops it off. Tier one, this will win you the game. So strong. It looks so awesome. It is. It has so much power, so much toughness, and such relevant abilities. And it's exactly what you expect when you when you're thinking of a big uh, uh, T Rex going uh, after a tiny little pirate. No, a monster saw. A monster saw. All right, sure, <sighs> sure, stay fun. All right. Anyway, those are the end comments. Let's have a look at the rares. The first of our rare cards is Rampaging Ferocidon for two and a red. We have a 3-3 Dinosaur with Menace. Okay, so already for three mana, getting a 3-3 with Menace is super nasty. We want that, that's great. Additionally, players can't gain life, okay, but, you know, with the potential upside at some point, but... But you're in red, you're not gonna gain life. You're not, so it's not relevant for you and your opponents. I've seen very little life link in this set as well, so it's not gonna All be that relevant. Vampire, yes. Not all, all those one ones yeah, you mean. No ah, ones. Nobody cares about that. <laughs> Alright, so whenever another creature enters the battlefield, rampaging Ferocidon deals one damage to that creature's controller. That also includes you, which means that whenever a creature comes onto the battlefield, that player's con that creature's controller is going to be losing one life. So of course we can play around that, we can play bigger creatures. Especially yeah, if somebody's going for that vampire tribal token thing, then they are completely screwed because they're also losing life and they can't gain life anymore through their lifelink. But that is all situational. Well, how do we evaluate this card? It is a 3-3, three, 4-3 three, three with Menace, and that is going to be doing tons and tons of damage. It's great early, it's great late, tier 1. Yeah, but you forgot the most important thing, or what, one of the most important things, the antifilt ability, like of the other ones. It will drain a lot of life without even doing anything. Yeah. So that's so relevant. People will want to play creatures and that will cost them a lot of life. And you're attacking 
after that with a 3-3 with Menace. Yeah. So, play this. Um, this will most likely win you the game. Yeah, but try and play less creatures than your opponent so that you drain them more. Doesn't matter, you're taking, That's you're true, taking for more damage. You're, you're, play, the... you're playing red, yeah. you want to attack. Exactly, very good. Powerful dinosaur. Yeah. Captain Lenoy Storm. Two in a red, it's a 2 2 human pirate with haste. Whenever she attacks, you create a uh, treasure. Whenever you sacrifice a treasure, she, um, she gets plus one, plus zero until end of turn. So it's a good filler. It's a 2 2 for 3 with haste, like we said before. It's not relevant. You see your attack, you, uh, it will probably be blocked by a 2 2. Then you get a treasure out of it. So it's not that bad. No. So, a good filler. Yeah, filler. Yeah. Probably won't do much, much more than that. No, exactly. No. Uh, Tillamali's Skin Shifter for 2 and a red, so for 3 mana we get a 0-1 with haste. Additionally, when this guy attacks, he becomes a copy of another target non-legendary attacking creature until the end of the turn. Okay, so when you first read, you think, you first, your mind goes into ideal scenario where you think, okay, cool, I'm going to be attacking with this one and the 5-5 five, five, uh, Triceratops looking creature that can't attack alone. And then you've got the 5-5 five, five, and this one becomes a copy, and then you're attacking with two 5-5s. Five, five, uh, that's going to be super powerful, but most situations won't be like that um, because the, um, the creatures that you're going to be attacking with also needs to be a very efficient creature and that, that won't die in combat and then this won't be a copy of that and what, it also doesn't make a copy of the best thing on the battlefield. It has to be something yours and it has to be something you send. So there's a lot of clauses uh, which means that the, there are going to be quite a few situations where you won't be able to attack with it efficiently and then it's just sitting there as a 0-1. Exactly, and if you don't have a creature to attack with, it's a 0-1 with haste. What are you gonna do with a 0-1 with haste? Absolutely nothing, so it needs other stuff to work. So you want to build around it, which means it's better in constructed. Yeah. Repeating Bowage. It's 1 and 2 words, it's sorcery. Repeating Bowage deals 3 damage to target creature or player and has weight for 3 and 2 red. Return with Repeating Bowage. From your graveyard to your hand, activate this ability only if you attack with the creature this turn. So you can do two damage to target creature or player, which is already good for three uh, for three mana. And if you attack, you can pay five mana to get it back. So late game, you don't really have anything to do with your mana. You attack with a creature, which you want to do anyways. Pay five mana, get it back, cast it the next turn, or if you have so much mana, cast it this turn and do it every single turn. So tier two always play this. Yeah, this is so strong. Yeah. Once again, early it's good because it's very nice removal. Late is good because you can get multiple uses out of it. Super strong. Vance's Blasting Stations is next for three and a red. So it's one of those flip cards that each one of the colors has. It's a legendary enchantment. It says at the beginning of your upkeep, we're gonna exile the top card of our library. If it is a non-land card, we can cast it this turn. Additionally, whenever you cast your third spell in a turn, you may transform this card. So in essence, you don't have to do that. Uh, then if we do choose to transform it, uh, we're gonna go, it's gonna become Spitfire Bastion. Spitfire Bastion is a land which taps for a red, and additionally for two and a red and tapping it, we're gonna be able to deal three damage to target creature or player. Now, uh, the first part is essentially um, it's not bad to be able to look at the top card and be able to cast it because it's kind of like a draw. Most of the times you will be able to do something with it if it's not if it's well non land card. So it's kind of like a draw. But the problem is whereas those other cards that do similar effects, kind of the scry kind of things, those all come in so early in the game. And this one comes in at four. And four is of course what we discussed already a very crucial point. You want something to do, to do something right away on turn four. So it's kind of a trap because uh, you're thinking long term, but this is already mid to late of the game. So in essence, you don't want to play this card because it's kind of dangerous because it doesn't do anything when it comes in. Exactly. And the flip side is great. It's really awesome. But you have to play three spells in a turn. And you play this one late game. Okay, you look at the top card. If you have two cards in hand, then you have three cards you can play. But you need to have the mana for it. And you most likely won't you, you will never able to flip it. Yeah. And if you top deck this card, it will not do anything. So that's why I just put it aside. Yeah, yeah, the, 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 the flip side, the Spitfire Bastion part is really nice. Yeah, it's really nice. But insane. you just won't be able to get it. And that's such a shame. You think, oh, maybe it's red, small creatures, but still don't try it. If you draw it 
And when you don't have any cards in hand, you're not gonna do anything. Yeah, and even if you do build your deck with all these tiny little creatures, you're most likely will have played all those tiny creatures before you play this card, because you got a lot of cheap small creatures. You wanna play them out to be aggressive. So you won't have them late game anyway. Your hand will be even more empty, making the chance even smaller that you can play three cards. Exactly, so don't play it, don't try it. Captivating crew, it's three and a red. It's a four three human pirate, and for three and a red, gain control of target creature and opponent controls until end of turn. Untap the creature against haste until end of turn. Activate its ability anytime you could cast a sorcery. So if, uh, in your first main phase, you will steal a creature and attack with it. And like we said before, oh, it isn't that great because it doesn't change the board state. But this one is different. It's for four mana. It's a four three, which is already good. And then you can do it every single turn. And if you have more mana, you can steal more creatures. So this will win you the game. Tier 1, play it. If I see it, hmm, maybe I should play red. Yeah, it is so incredibly powerful. Mm -hmm. Once again, on turn 4, it does something. It's a 4-3, which is massive, especially with that 3 top. That's very nice, because mm -hmm. it doesn't die to bears. And then after that, then you just you guarantee that the mana will be able to do it every turn, because you have the 4, obviously, to play this. So that's super sweet. Yeah, this is so good. Like I don't even need to attack with it, because I attack with something else, with yeah. their stuff. Yeah. You kill them with their own creature, it's nasty. And of course, it's once again the best creature you're going to be taking. Sunbird's Invocation is next for a 5 and a red. So for 6 mana, it's an enchantment. It states that whenever you cast a spell from your hand, you're going to reveal the top X cards of our library, where X is the spell's converted mana cost. Then we can cast a, a card revealed this way with converted mana cost X or less without paying the mana cost. We're going to put the rest at the bottom of our library in any order. Okay, so we're gonna be playing in a random order. In a random order. So we're gonna be playing a spell and then we're gonna be looking at the top few cards and we're gonna be able to play one of those for free. I think it's uh, it's gonna be coming in far too late to be doing something. I don't know, it's tricky. Also because uh, it doesn't do anything on the turn it comes in, which we looked already before these enchantments. You want something to have a great impact and this does nothing. And of course, late game, you're uh, at this point where you get the six mana, you're gonna be maybe top decking and then you play something. And what if you draw a land or you draw a card that is very low converted mana cost and the chance of triggering this is also almost non-existent. So there's just too many situations where when you play this, you're gonna get absolutely nothing out of it and you're gonna feel super bad. Yeah, this card is great if you um, play a long game and then you play a lot of big things, but that's not limited. This is not for limited. No. So just put it aside. Next one is Burning Sun's Avatar. It's 3 and 3 red. It's a 6 6 dinosaur avatar. And when he enters the battlefield, it's 3 damage to target opponent and 3 damage for up to 1 target creature. A 6 6 for 6, it's already great. It's a really big creature. And then it deals damage um, to the uh, dice. And then it deals damage to another creature. So, tier 1, this will win you games. It comes in, it moves something. And it's nearly unstoppable. Yeah, so this is a great example of, a, of a, a card that is a body, it's removal, and it's reach towards yeah. de dealing damage. So it does everything. Tier 1. Yeah, tier 1. Uh, Angrath's Marauders for 5 and 2 red. So for 7 mana we get a 4-4 four, four human pirate. Additionally, if a sorcery control will deal damage to a permanent or player, it will deal double the damage to a permanent or player instead. So the body, a 4-4 four, for four, 7, is a little bit on the low side. Mm -hmm. It's kind of, you know, usually around 5, maybe 6 mana. We find this is 7 mana, so the body would not be enough to warrant it. However, it gives essentially all our creatures what would be like double strike. It's going to make our stuff deal double the damage. And also, of course, when red, our removal spells, our burn spells, those are also going to be doing double damage. And that is why it pushes it into tier one territory. Because after when you play this, it immediately does not You place and immediately you can swing it with your team, your team doing twice as much damage, which is awesome. Yeah, it's just great. Um, there are more doubling of um, damage effects and they're just always really great. And especially just, it doesn't matter which damage it is. So every single damage on anything, yeah. great, great. Yeah, so he said of course the body 4-4, four, four, but in essence of course it's an 8-4 when you think about it. Yeah. Not bad. Not bad at all. Sweet. Alright, those are the rares. Let's have a look at the mythics. The first mythic is Rowdy Crew. It's 2 and 2 red. 
It's a 3-3 human pirate with trample, and what crew enters the battlefield, draw 3 cards, and discard 2 cards at random. If 2 cards that share a, creature, uh, that share a card type, or discard this way, put 2 plus 1 personal characters on what crew. So for 4 mana, you get a 3-3 Templar, which is already decent, and you can draw, a card, uh, draw 3 cards, discard 2 of them, so you net 1 card, and if it's the same card type, you get 2 plus 1 personal counters, so it's a 5-5 five, five, uh, Trampler, but it depends, you have a lot of creatures, but you have lands and other stuff, so you won't need to count on it, even without it, you get a card, it's a 2 3 Temple, it's just great, play it, tier 2, always play it. Exactly, yeah, so it's, yeah, the 3-3 three, three with Trample yeah. for 4 is fine with a potential upside, actually, yeah. and a card, because you also get that yeah, card. Exactly, yeah, so it's card. Trample and you get a card. Yeah, that's definitely always good, tier yeah. 2. Then we come to the last of the mythics, the moment the dinosaurs have all been dreading since the dawn of creation. The star of extinction for five and two red, so for seven mana, it's a sorcery. We're going to be destroying a uh, target land and star of extinction deals 20 damage to each creature and each planeswalker. Now, this, of course, is flavorful because the uh, meteor comes in and destroys the land. Yeah. And then, of course, the uh, the explosion that comes after that destroys every creature and every planeswalker. So that is super flavorful. And, of course, what do we say about board wipes? They win games because we can play around them and our opponents don't know about it. They don't play around it. So it's tier one. The apocalypse, end of the world, is a tier one card in Star of Extinction. Yeah, yeah. That's I, it. I really like it. It's really flavorful. It's really cool. But... I wonder what happens next set if all the dinosaurs are dead. Yeah, I also find it very weird that this would be in... Well, I mean, it makes sense it's in red because of the damage, but in essence, the red is also the color of the dinosaurs, where in essence you want... The dinosaur player doesn't want the Star of Extinction because it doesn't want to... Yeah. But it's a damage spell, so red is the it best has to be card. That. It, it, has just, to be it way, yeah. removes the land, which is red, and then it deals damage, which is red. So yeah. And I also like that it hits Planeswalkers as well. Yeah, that's really nice. It makes sense that it would kill Planeswalkers too, exactly. but a lot of these effects don't hit Planeswalkers, which is weird. But anyway. that's, Yeah, that's why it's not really relevant that much in Limited, mm -hmm. but it makes it so much better. Absolutely. All right, those are the mythics. Let's have a look at the conclusion. In conclusion, red is kind of a... Eh, color, I guess. Um, you can, of course, play aggressive as you always can. It's got some pretty decent small creatures uh, for a low cost. But the problem is that naturally we're going to be building our decks with mostly the commons and uncommons because that's the cards that we have the most access to. And red, unfortunately, really falls behind when it comes to the power and quality of the cards when it comes to commons and uncommons. The rares and the mythics, however, are very, very good, which means most likely you'll be pulling one of, or, or two of those kind of cards and then you'll think to yourself, okay, I need to play this, but the problem is you won't have enough of the rest of the red cards in the commons and uncommons to be able to really support your rare or your or mythic that you, that you pulled. So that makes it really dangerous. What red does have is, of course, it, it has good uh, um, damage, spells. damage spells, exactly. Those uh, burn damage spells. Uh, and of course, this in this uh, set, these are very strong as well. Once again, so yeah. you can definitely use that. It's it's a lot this time actually. Now a lot lot of burn spells, and that's really good. And um, overall power of red, I think it like lags a bit behind. I'm not really that excited about it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't have those gems because yeah. there still are um, cards in there that are really good, really exciting. But I think it's not like your main color. There are not enough cards in red to be your main color that's like really good. Yeah, so I would imagine that you could play uh, two colors um, and for example blue and green and then you might splash for a really powerful red card yeah. or a couple of really powerful red cards. Exactly. Um, um, removal in limited is so important and black has some good removal even though it's a little weaker white has some removal and red always has that burn damage and that's also really important yeah that's really good creatures as well like yeah. there's dinosaurs and exactly. some pirates and stuff so it has salt, some really solid creatures but they're just so far and few between yeah. that's more of a splash color than, than one of your main colors but you have to watch out though with splashing because mm -hmm. um a lot of those burn spells have double wet in them yeah that's dangerous and that's yeah. dangerous yeah so watch out for it but it's still a good color for the uh, um, burn spells. Exactly. 
All right, well, uh, now we're going to remind you guys that we have, for the last time, that we have a Patreon page, so head on over to patreon.com slash budgetmtgdex to check out what kind of rewards we have over there for people who become our patrons, and also we'd like to thank our current patrons very much for being our patron. Uh, also, join us on Facebook and on Twitter. We have discussions about these cards. Let us know if you agree with this evaluation. Do you think red is much stronger? It is. Uh, the, does have the potential to be your main color. Let us know what you think over there. Also, subscribe to us here on YouTube. Hit that button so that you get also that bell button. I mean, so you get notifications of when the new videos come out. Of course, the next video coming out is going to be the green, all the green cards of Ixalan. Um, that's it. Thanks for watching. I'm David. I'm Stefan. This is Budget of Dex.